And hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. And tonight, we've been to see Captain Marvel. So, first off, let's start at the very beginning. The opening logos, or the very special opening logos that they had, which were basically just Stan Lee. Because, you know, it's Stan's universe. All of these people are just playing in it. Have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I thought it was pretty touching, really. Okay, okay. So, yeah. That was a thing. Uh, again, the Mighty Marvel tradition. It was a well-crafted, greatly entertaining movie. I thought it was an acceptable movie. In general, it was just kind of acceptable. I mean, there wasn't much in terms of, like, the hero's journey, because he didn't really develop that much. I don't know. The hero's journey is sort of its own monomyth. It has its own beats, and it works in its own way. And when one subverts that, you can be surprised. I didn't think there was any subversion going on in that particularly. Oh, there was a massive subversion. Was there? The final duel, where the hero and the main antagonist, or what had been the main antagonist up until this point, came to blows, or in this case, didn't. Well, I mean, no, not really, because if you think about it, he's been training her all that time to overcome herself and be the best version of herself that she can be. And, like, he's challenging her to prove stuff. That he's and all, he, all she does is knock him out with power that she hadn't earned. Not earned? Yeah. She blew up that engine and got hit with an energy blast. And that was it. It's not like Tony Stark and um, building the, the Iron Man suit. Or Captain America and just... Him getting picked to be Captain America because of his bravery. She blew up the engine and got hit by an energy blast. If you look at Doctor Strange as well, who like has to overcome his arrogance and hubris and set aside everything that he thinks he knows and kind of relearn himself. Mm. Well, there is that. But of course, the whole time she didn't realise that there was a little thing on the back of her neck that was actually stopping her. Well, I think she did realise there was a little thing on the back of her neck, but she didn't know it was stopping her. Until she, like, took it off, really. Yeah. Once she got the memories of getting hit by the energy blast, she knew that those powers weren't given to her by the device, so she needed to take the device off. And then that sort of just unleashed Captain Marvel in all her glory. Yeah. It was kind of a mishmash of all kind of Captain Marvel mishmashes. Like you got Marvel, who was supposed to be a man, but in that he's a woman. And then I think in the original version of the comics, the second Captain Marvel. Monica Rambeau. I think she's hit by an energy blast that gives her her powers. Yeah, Monica Rambeau, who was a little girl in 1995. Yeah. So by now, if she hasn't been dusted, she'll be probably of adult age. Yeah. So she's got a chance of becoming a Captain Marvel in the future. Mm-hmm. I quite like the scroll design. The chins could have been a bit more wrinkly, but it was pretty good. Wasn't impressed at all by the Supreme Intelligence. And now they try to write it off and say, oh, no, I can see the Supreme Intelligence in its original form. Because, I don't know, it would scare people or whatever. But, like, we've seen the talking raccoon and the giant tree man. So I think we can deal with a uh, giant head in the tank. Uh, maybe it isn't a giant head in the tank. Maybe it's some kind of uh, massive server mainframe thing that's row upon row upon row of semi-organic or fully organic computers or something. Well, I was a, I will think of the comic version, which is like a big head in a vat. Big yeah. green head with like tentacles coming out of the top. Oh, 
Scrolls. Getting back to the scrolls. Uh-huh. That main scroll, Talos. Ben Mendelssohn that played Talos. I recognised the voice. He was the bloke that played the imaginary dog, or the bloke in the dog suit, from that, um, I can't remember its name, it was the sitcom. Wilfred. Um, Wilfred. Yeah, he was Wilfred, I'm sure of it. This is not actually the case, as the actor Ben Mendelssohn, who played Talos, was actually last seen as Commandant Krennic in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. The guy who played Wilfred was called Jason Gann and actually co-created the original Australian series. All of which I discovered after a cursory search on Wikipedia. Oh. You know, I have to mention, like, what was up with Brie Larson's face? I mean, I don't want to be one of those guys who says, oh, can't you smile, blah, blah, blah. She cause... smiled. Yeah, she did sometimes, which is, was the frustrating part. But a lot of the time, she was sort of, like, her face didn't move a lot. It was like she had Botox face. It didn't really move a lot. It's like she didn't know how to emote. But it annoyed me because sometimes she could. Well, maybe that's something from having, like, two directors. I don't know, because, like, most of the time, she didn't. Um, and I mean, another thing that irritated me as well was like, say for the first like 20 minutes, half an hour of the film, before they put her in the scroll brain scrambling machine thingy, I don't think I even saw her blink once. And she had kind of like a little girl's voice as well. Most of the time that was fairly monotone. So, not, not too impressed by her. I mean, she's supposed to have won an Oscar for something. I found the music kind of um, uninspired as well. Well, you know, the one thing about um, Marvel movies, they have perfunctory music. I Although, know. I will take you up on that. I will say, I will say that no, for, the, can, for you know, the yeah. big, uh, joyful ass-kicking scene where she, like, turns on her former squad, no doubt's just a girl. I mean... Uh, it's yeah, it's about as generic of a choice as anything. Yeah. You know, generic, ironic. Oh, a woman is tougher than she appears. Kicks Mucho butt. Stick on No Doubt, just a girl. But they also had Gemma Chan, and she was, like, tough in that as well, so it's not as a. They didn't have any tough women in it, kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, think about, like... But if you say Iron Man, right, I bet he's got music that would make you think of him. So, like, his own theme tune. Captain America does, Iron Man does. And, I mean, we know Wonder Woman does. Yeah. Is she with you? Yeah, I think that was the original one, but, like, obviously, get, that's, like, gets used all the time in, like, in her film and so on. Yeah. A Captain Marvel doesn't have her own theme. Yeah. I know. Uh, I mean, they used, like, uh, Blitzkrieg Bop for Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. But I did like that when she finally unleashed her powers, she managed to save the Earth from the Kree. Uh, one thing I want to do get to. Yeah. There are now, in this universe, there are Skrulls and Shaitari. So, do we even know now what the Chaitari are? Well, they, um... That's also a fact in the comics as well. Yeah, they're not of Asgard, nor of any world known. Yeah. Not at the time. Yeah. They're really the origin of Fury's eye patch. They put too many kind of Easter eggs in. That, I'll be honest, were a bit rubbish. Like, there was the eye patch thing, mm-hmm. it was just a bit dumb. You didn't need the Tesseract again. You didn't. Because, you know, they're all saying, oh, the core, she's developed the core. Well, it's just the Tesseract again. And it just kind of confuses things, because I was happy with it being at the bottom of the sea with Captain America, and then they recovered it, and then they were keeping it stored. 
<laughs> so he didn't need to be... Because it just raises more questions like, how did Captain Marvel find it and get it out? And how did no one else pick it up? Like surely Howard Stark had machines looking for the energy and whatnot. Well, you know, at the time, his machines weren't all that great. Yeah. That was really nuts, though. Oh, yeah. well, they'd have to pick up the energy side. Yeah. And the whole, oh, we got the name Avengers from her, like, call sign. It was, like, awful. It wasn't great, I'll be honest. Yeah. Joyful expansions of power are one thing. Being awesome and smashing through spaceships is something you'd like to see Superman do. Maybe. On your left, DC. Sorry, guys, I had to, I had to. Still, Thor stood in the path of a neutron star to um, build his own weapon, his new weapon. I still think he's the toughest. Yep, he is a thunder god. Right, well, since there's still not much of a ladder, and I think that we're calling Aquaman as part of last year, yeah, we'll uh, go by final thoughts and rating. As you say, yeah, because I... There are now other films on there. It was functional. Special effects were quite good. Uh, oh, I mean, that was another thing that, like, bothered me. Like, because ev- everyone else seemed to emote better. And, like, there was Jon Rob all the time saying, you've got to control your emotions, and the face didn't switch. It just, like, that felt a bit stupid. But, yeah. I liked some of the designs. The action was okay. She just wasn't very good. I don't know. But apart from that, it was okay. It wasn't terrible. Rating? Five, maybe a six. Uh, it's another big, noisy extravaganza in the mighty Marvel tradition. You always say that. Well, you know, they are formulaic, but they're never completely predictable. So I'm going to go with it. The so-called Widowmaker, The Kiss of Death, 7 out of 10. 7, The Widowmaker? But anyway, this has been Funky Monkey and his name is Producer. E-begging links are below. Thank you for listening and we'll see you at the movies. Bye.